first we talk about the asexual reproduction. Though there are a lot many methods of asexual reproduction, but we will talk about the most important ones. Asexual reproduction, as we know, involves no gametes because the offsprings will be produced by simple cell division or mitosis or uh, some other processes in a single cell, in a single organism. There are many methods of asexual reproduction in organisms. We talk about them one by one. Binary fission is very, very one, um, a very common method in particularly prokaryotes and in unicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms we know, the organisms which consist of a single cell. Multiple fission, this is also a common method uh, of uh, asexual reproduction in unicellular organisms, many of these. Budding, budding is also another uh, important method of asexual reproduction and it takes place in many organisms, unicellular and even in many of the multicellular organisms. Then there is another method called regeneration, which is um, actually not an exact method of asexual reproduction, but it serves uh, sometimes for uh, asexual reproduction. Regeneration is actually the revival of the lost part of an um, organism, like an arm in the starfish. Then the vegetative propagation in plants. Sometimes the plants, their vegetative parts, that is those parts which are not involved generally normally in reproduction, these parts can propagate or they can grow into newer plants uh, and separate from the parent plant and they grow. We call it vegetative propagation. We talk about all of these methods in a more detail, one by one. First of all, binary fission. Binary fission, division into two. Binary means two, fission means division, rupturing. This is a type of asexual reproduction which is very common in bacteria, which is a major method of reproduction in the prokaryotes. The bacteria divides by binary fission. We can also say they reproduce by asexually by binary fission. In bacteria, for example, binary fission takes place by this process. We divide that process into steps. We can divide it into four steps. Step one, the replication of single chromosome takes place. We know that in bacteria, there is a single chromosome. There is only one chromosome. That chromosome goes through or undergo a process of replication. That is, uh, in other words, we call it duplication. That is, it divides into two. If it have plasmids, then plasmids also divide into two. Uh, that is, each plasmid divide into two. Then this chromosome and the plasmids, they move towards the sides of the cell. When they reaches the sides of the cell, then the cell membrane starts invaginating from center towards inside. Then this membrane, we can say invaginating, the membrane of both sides meet almost in the center. And the cytoplasm is actually divided by the membrane into two cells. When it happens, is complete, then um, the cell wall is laid between these two cells. And when cell wall is formed, cell is divided into two cells. This is called binary fission in bacteria. Binary fission also takes place in other organisms like in unicellular organisms, in amoeba, in paramecium, they also divide by binary fission, though not always. Sometimes they also use some other methods, but mostly they divide by binary fission when the conditions are normal or favorable. How it happened? In uh, these organisms, the nucleus elongates and uh, divide into two, actually after duplication of their uh, nuclear material. Nucleus elongates and divide into two. Uh, then these two nuclei goes towards uh, sides, and the cytoplasm also divide. Cytoplasm divide by invagination of the cell membrane, uh, and when cell membrane uh, actually touches each other, both sides of cell membrane that touches each other, the cell is separated into two cells, and both cells um, makes new organism, new amoeba or a new paramecium. Uh, we exemplify this process with the help of um, a diagram that uh, in binary fission, the nucleus elongates. When it elongates, then the cell membrane, it starts invaginating. Then these nuclei, they go on both sides and they separate. And then cell membranes start invaginating. They invaginate more, more and more, and ultimately it is separated. Then 
it makes two cells. We call this simple division binary fission, which occur in most of the prokaryotes, particularly the bacteria. This is the most common method in bacteria and uh, in amoeba, paramecium and many other unicellular organisms. They divide by binary fission. That is division by simple cell, uh, uh, simple nuclear division and division of cytoplasm um, into two cells. These cells are identical because these are the products of same parent cell. These are just like their parent cell. They do not have any additional characteristic. This is a type of a disadvantage. Now we talk about next method called multiple fission. Say multiple fission, more than one divisions, actually many divisions. Multiple fission uh, is a method adopted by some organisms mostly the unicellular organisms, what happen that a single cell divides into many cells. Mostly it uh, occur during unfavorable conditions. For example, in an amoeba, if unfavorable conditions comes, that the amoeba makes itself into the form of a cyst. It converts itself into the form of a cyst, a very hard structure. And when it makes the cyst, that is, it is covered by a harder structure uh, to protect it from the harsh environmental changes in inside of its cytoplasm, the nuclei divides by mitosis, that is by simple division, into many nuclei. That is one nucleus divided into two, two into four and so on. Uh, so uh, by multiple divisions of nuclei, nucleus, lot many nuclei are produced inside the cytoplasm. Then every nucleus is surrounded by some part of cytoplasm. Cytoplasm come and surround every nucleus, every new nucleus. Amoeba can sustain in this form for longer periods for, the, for actually passing the unfavorable conditions. When the favorable conditions comes, then the cyst is removed and cell membrane is formed around all of these small nuclei plus cytoplasm combinations and one cell divides into many cells and all of these cells will develop into a new organism. So multiple fission is actually the fission that is breakage of uh, one organism into many organisms. That is one cell, one cell parent into many one celled uh, offsprings. Have a look on a diagram which shows this process. Here you can see in the diagram that uh, a cell have only one nucleus, then it divides by a mitosis into two and then multiple mitosis takes place and many nuclei are produced. When favorable conditions comes, then cell membrane starts making uh, coverings around these, all of these sets, all of these nuclei plus cytoplasmic uh, bodies and divide the same cell into many cells. We call it multiple fission and multiple fission is usually a process that takes place during the unfavorable conditions. When conditions are not favorable for life, the organisms adapt this strategy. Then budding. Budding is also a very common method of asexual reproduction, particularly in the unicellular organisms and also in some simple multicellular organisms. Examples are yeast, which is a unicellular fungus. We commonly use it into making our breads. And uh, in hydra, which is a multicellular organism and lives in water. Budding, what happened? Actually, what is the process? Look at this diagram. An outgrowth appears on the body of the parent. We call this outgrowth a bud. This bud grows and the nucleus of the parent cell divides into two and one nucleus goes to this bud, travels towards this bud and enters into inside this bud. This bud usually keeps growing for some time. When it is large enough to continue its life, it is separated from the parent's body and it makes a separate organism. Many times, several buds appear on the body of same organism. Particularly in yeast, there are a lot many buds uh, that appear on the body of the parent. And ultimately, every one of them separates from the parent and makes a new organism.
same uh, uh, characteristic um, is adopted by the hydra. In hydra, also a bud appear on the body of the parent, and uh, this bud ultimately develops into um, an organism, and then it is separated from the body of the parent. So budding is also method of reproduction. Some bacteria also reproduce uh, by this method that is budding. So most of the bacteria divide by binary fission. Another method called regeneration. The regeneration actually is not a, not a method of asexual reproduction, but this is actually a method of uh, regenerating or remaking lost part of organism's body. There are many organisms which have characteristics, characteristic that they can remake their lost part. This is commonly found in starfishes and in planaria. Planaria we know are a type of flat worms. In starfishes, these are the echinoderms, which are the marine animals, which have actually starfish have a shape like a star. It have five arms. Many times it happen that when star, starfish uh, encounters an enemy, uh, it's, it's one arm is lost or due to any accident maybe it's one arm is or more than one arm is lost. They have a characteristic that when their arm is lost, they can by mitosis make their arm again. This is the regeneration for making a newer part. But in planaria, when uh, sometimes what happens that planaria is cut into two halves, in two pieces. Now both of these halves have regenerative capability. Bo uh, the, the, both of these halves will make their other half by simple uh, mitosis process, that is division of the cells. As you can see in the diagram in front of you, if we divide a planarian into two halves from the center, both of these halves in some time will regenerate their other part and they will make two new organisms from the halves, that is one from the anterior half and one from the posterior half. So in this way, it also makes another type of method of reproduction, asexual reproduction, that is uh, one organism is made with the help of uh, simply regenerating itself, simple cell division. Plants also reproduce asexually with the help of we call vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagation means that their vegetative parts, that is, which are not their flowering parts and uh, which are those parts which are normally, which do not normally um, reproduce or involved in the reproduction. What happened? It is a process that involves vegetative propagation of some plant parts, particularly stems and leaves. Its examples are the runners, the suckers, we call some plants runners. These plants, if you look at in, in the diagram, they are the creepers. They grow on walls or soil or other parts and they produce roots from different parts, from their stems. When a plant is growing, a runner is growing, it produces some roots from its stem, which are called adventitious roots. These roots uh, attaches to the soil or to the substrate, to the surface, and uh, then they make uh, newer leaves and stem from that part, and then they are separated from the parent plant and make a new plant. Uh, the examples are grasses and strawberry. Grasses usually grow like this. Um, this is the reason that grasses are very fast growers and they grow easily in comparison to many other, most of the actually other plants. Uh, strawberry plant also grows like this. There are others uh, like banana and the mint. They have suckers. Um, they have roots that actually uh, insert themselves into uh, the surface where they are growing. Sometimes there is a side root which is produced from their stem and that's from that, and that side roots also uh, become attached to the surface where they are growing and it makes a new plant. That is a new plant, the stem and the leaves, they arise from that uh, new root. We call it also adventitious root. From this adventitious root, new plants, they grow. Um, this is the reason that growing these plants is also uh, easier. Later on, this sucker or this part, this adventitious root part separates from the main plant and it makes a new plant. We call this 
um, vegetative propagation. In some plants, even uh, vegetative propagation occur by leaves. For example, the bryophyllum. In the bryophyllum, what happened that uh, their leaves, their large leaves have notches upon them. That is small extensions. These leaves have some extensions upon them. They look like uh, spiny uh, on their margins. Uh, and every notch have the capability of making a new plant. When the leaves, they fall off on the ground um, and they touches the soil, then these notches may develop into new plant. This is also uh, a very good uh, way of uh, uh, spreading their, um, their race, their, um, uh, these plants on various parts uh, of the soil. So this is, this, is a, this is an advantage for these plants that they can grow easily and quickly.